In about 40 years of its existence, Cantamanto has become home to over 30,000 traders who deal in second-hand clothing. By the early 1980s, when the trade in second-hand clothing became a real thing, Ghana's local fashion scene then had no idea what it was up against. The importation of second-hand clothing usually called foes or obroni wewu, which translates into dead white man's clothes almost immediately crushed the then thriving fashion scene. The first few decades after independence in 1957 saw the boom of the local fashion industry. The spirit of nationalism drove many Ghanaians to proudly embrace their culture through their dressing. It was common to see young men in their antoma and ladies in their kaba and slit. This is not to downplay the importance of this style long before independence, but it was during this period that the local fashion scene really witnessed its highest moments. Now, this was the period where most women valued their fabrics and cloth just as anyone would value their gold. Fabrics like kente, motane, batik, and wax print were among the most valuable assets in every household. People did not just reserve these for special occasions, but they were also worn on a daily basis. This meant local fashion designers and dressmakers were among the busiest groups of people at the time. But long gone are the days where you and I would go to the local fashion designer to get measured for our everyday clothing. Now, people will just pick that up from Cantamanto because it is cheap and saves time. The local fashion industry has never recovered from the shock it suffered after the second-hand clothing trade really took off. In fact, but for Ghanaians' love for their culture and other few government initiatives like the Wire Ghana on Fridays, this industry would be long dead. I've been in the fashion business for a long time. It's been about two years. So the second-hand business is it's really high, its patronage is really high, and then not so much could be done about it. It's, it's already in the system and we can't do anything about it. But how it has affected me is that most of the things I create, for me, I, I specialize in ready-to-wear outfits. So I try to create certain things, and then you, you go out and then you realize that people are getting it cheaper outside. And it's just similar to the design you made. Meanwhile, it was a design that came to me like naturally. It wasn't like you copied it or something. It's something that you actually made, thought about, and be like, oh, this would be nice, and then people would like it. So the only thing that would uh, draw people's interest to you is will be the fabric. Maybe I'm using a, an African print or plain fabric that they don't like. But most of the times, some of the things you make, people get them in second-hand clothing, which actually slows down your business because of the cost, because of the cost differences. For the new generation fashion designers like Delhi, it is imperative that a contemporary approach be inculcated into their designs. She began her fashion brand, My Aura, two years ago when she sought to fulfill an inner passion while she was in the university. Entering an industry that is completely overshadowed by the second-hand clothing trade, Delhi highlights some of the innovative measures she has adopted. To me, I like a blend of both because there are certain things, even though most of the times I feel like I can make most of the things I've seen uh, on the streets, I, I like a blend of both depending on, on the kind of design I'm seeing. So for instance, with the ready-made clothing that I make, uh, a lot goes into me, like, it comes from um, generational designs, it comes to taking photography, it comes with social media marketing, it comes with uh, the raw materials as well. So mostly, the fabrics are more expensive 
and they also can hang clothing. They are produced in larger quantities, and those are fast fashions. And then they are produced because they are in trend. But what I produce, is I produce them because I want to create something sustainable, something that you can wear more than once. You don't just wear it once and then it, it's out of fashion, something. So it's, it's a one first process to produce ready-made clothing. And then even though I get to produce more, there's a limited quantity compared to what second-hand clothing is. Even though you get to see like, oh, it's second-hand clothing, there's only one of it. It's not just one of it. There is a lot, a lot that goes on behind this second-hand clothing that we, we, most of us don't know. And it, it really affects us because we want to produce something high quality and then that's just something you can randomly pick up. Ghanaians are proud of their culture and it is evident through traditional clothing which we display. But in reality, this traditional style of dressing has been reduced to only special occasions like festivals, weddings and graduations. Ironically, people barely wear anything Ghanaian in Ghana. The taste for foreign clothing, mostly second-hand clothes, has become enhanced by the availability and low prices. One could easily suggest a ban on the importation of second-hand clothing, but that remains easier said than done. An estimated average of 15 million individual second-hand items arrive in Cantamanto every single week. But over 40% of all these items are rejected due to their low quality grade. The trade at Cantamanto over the years has become organized under the Cantamanto Traders Association. The market has an instituted structure that seeks to make the consent of traders its priority. This trade forms a large part of Accra's informal economic sector. It has employed thousands and the skills of many such as tailors and cobblers. Undoubtedly, many have benefited from trading in the second-hand clothing business. One of such traders is Amos. <laughs> We started money almost 17 years or so. We need the business. Uh, the business is also, I'm taking it, I'm going to throw food on the table. And the table is so we deserve to be a person to pay. I'm going to throw, and so we use a man for it. I pay. I put it away from, to me high figure. And I got a and I jeans, the t-shirt. I decided to make a return at the end. Despite being an active participant in the trade, Amos acknowledges the fact that wearing Ghanaian clothing is also very important. Yes, you know, you have an African woman. So you took her, you want to be a Ghana for your shirt. You want to be a Ghana for your shirt. In Africa, we need to offer, we need to share more. So, see, we took one, we did the most on court. Because Africa, we need to share, we need to work, we need to work with them, we need to work with them. We need to invest with them. We need to invest with them. We need to invest with them. We need to see this important interaction. We need to share the idea of the free. For the purpose of sponsorship advertisement, we break this video at this point. The story continues in the very next episode as the part two of the business of dead white man's clothing in Ghana. Mommy, I didn't think I'm breaking my child ginger drink in Kwan or fridge. Frekasa Natural Ginger Drink, aye, drink on Wasubia Junan Enterprise. Akofa Abedja Sua, what did you near your frekasi? Akeke drew, and I went here, I shame mumma. I want no more to me, Bwani Pedriano. Can I get frekasi? Oh no! We got frekasa Natural Ginger Drink. Mommy, mommy, three bottles of frekasi. Natural ginger drink. Pekasa natural ginger drink. Ah, man, no more feeling. Where do you shoot the beer anymore?
sansuna akoh bia sinu obia timnu